video in the description. You're gonna start out with these two layers, the photo frame background and the snow border. I have them on two separate layers, of course. And what we wanna do is we wanna isolate this black area here. We can, of course, create a selection around the black area to isolate it, but I like working with vectors better because they give you smaller file sizes and they're easier to edit. So we're gonna create a vector around the frame. So I'm gonna press Z on the keyboard. I'm holding the Z key. I'm not letting go of it. And I'm gonna zoom in to the corner here and release the Z key. It'll bring me back to the pen tool, which I had selected. Make sure that you have shape on the options panel on the drop down. Click on one corner and click on the next. Hold the space bar, hand down, click on the bottom right corner, and then click on the bottom left corner. I'm gonna hold the space bar again, click and drag to pan up, and complete that path. Now the color of the shape really doesn't matter, so I'm just gonna make it red just so that you can see it. There it is, red. What I'm gonna do now is enable the layer for the snow border. I'm gonna click and drag her up to the top of the layers panel. And I'm also gonna double tap here on the zoom tool just so we can see the image at 100%. And actually, now that I'm looking at it at 100%, I'm actually gonna right click on it and choose fit on screen so that I can see the entire composition. Then I'm gonna press Control J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate. So now I have two copies. I'm gonna disable the one on the top by clicking on this eye icon and the one on the bottom here. I'm gonna click to the shape below it. So with that layer selected, I'm gonna press Control Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac. Then I'm gonna enable the layer right above that. And I'm just gonna make a selection around the snow border. So I'm gonna click on the quick selection tool and I'm simply gonna click and drag around her. Now you don't have to be very precise at this moment. You can just click and drag and we'll worry about the details later. So we're just gonna select her as quick as we can. So I'm just clicking and dragging and notice that my selection is not very accurate. You shouldn't spend too much time. I'm gonna select that top layer and click on the layer mask icon to create a mask around the snow border. So what I'm gonna do now is click on this top layer, hold shift and click on the layer below it so they're both selected. And I'm gonna click on this little chain link icon here to link those two layers. But that, what I'm gonna do now is press Control T, Command T to transform to scale this and adjust it accordingly. If you can't see the corner handles that you wanna click and drag on, you can press Control Zero, that's Command Zero on the Mac, for the bird's eye view that allows you to see all four corner handles. Then I'm gonna click and drag on this one here to scale it down by holding Shift, Alt, that's Shift, Option on the Mac. Now at this point, we can go back and adjust the layer mask if we need to. So I'm gonna zoom in just so we can see the areas that we need to work on. So we need to work on this area and then the blue outline around our body. So we can adjust that by clicking in the layer mask, properties. Click on mask edge and then maybe shift the edge with a negative value and see how that's adjusted. So and keep adjusting it and making sure that that line is gone but we don't lose any detail that we wanna keep. Also, with this brush selected, I can click and drag here on the hair, and hopefully we'll get a better selection. So now, it didn't do that good of a job here, so I'm just gonna leave it like this for now, and then I can come back with the brush tool and fix that in a moment. So I'm gonna press OK, click on the brush tool, paint with white in areas that I wanna keep. So I'm just gonna paint with white in these areas, rid of the sky here. And I'm not gonna take the time to do so now. I will do that after the tutorial and you can see the final image, but I'm just gonna go around the entire image and just make sure that everything is masked out accordingly. And in most of these areas, everything seems to be okay. I know we gotta work on this area here. And like I said, I'll do that after I'm done with the tutorial and you can see my final results. But for now, we'll just leave it as is. I'm gonna press V on the keyboard, right click and choose fit to screen. And what we're gonna work on now is extra elements that are gonna help our description. You have to download them from 
from Adobe Stock. They're not free, but you can use a watermark preview to practice on. So I would recommend you doing that just so that you can have a way to practice and learn. So the first thing I gotta do is get rid of the shovel. I'm gonna click on the lasso tool. I'm gonna make a selection around the shovel. And as you can see, it's not very accurate. Okay, then I can hold shift and backspace. Or you can go into edit, fill to bring up the fill menu under contents choose content aware and press ok and photoshop will fill in those pixels and make the shovel disappear i'm going to press ctrl d command d of the mac to deselect and this is what we're going to work with the first thing that we need to do is mask out the snow from the ground so i'm going to go into the channels panel and i'm going to look for the channel that's got the most contrast in this case the blue channel i'm going to click and drag on the blue channel and drop it here in the new channel icon to duplicate it. Now with the duplicate channel, I can start making adjustments to it. The first thing I'm gonna do is fill with white on the areas that I wanna keep for sure. So with the lasso tool selected, I'm just gonna click and drag and make a very rough selection on the areas that I know for sure I wanna keep, which is all this top part here. Now that I have the selection active, I can fill with white. White is currently my foreground color. To fill with the foreground color, you can hold Alt, Backspace option, backspace on the Mac, then Control D, Command D on the Mac to deselect. Now we gotta work on this bottom part. There's a feature in Photoshop called Apply Image. If you go into Image, Apply Image, what Apply Image allows you to do is to take an image and apply it onto itself using a blend mode. In this case, we're taking the blue copy, applying the screen blend mode onto itself. So notice what happens here in the snow on the edge. It, essentially turns white which is what we want you could also of course apply a multiply blend mode and it'll give you a different result in this case i think i'm going to go with screen and then i'll just work on the edges in the next step so i'm going to press ok and what i'm going to do now is go into image adjustment levels and bring the levels to the right the dark values to the right so we have more contrast between the snow and the ground and remember, we're going to make like this one over to the left a little bit. I'm looking at the edges here. And maybe drag this one to the left as well. And press OK. Now, what I'm going to do now is click on the brush tool. Select black as my foreground color so I can paint with black. I'm going to increase the size of my brush by clicking on the right bracket key on the keyboard. And I'm just going to paint with black. And again, you don't have to be very accurate. As long as you get close enough it should be good and I'm just painting these pixels away which represent floor and once again I'm gonna go into image adjustment levels and darken up some of the darker pixels and brighten up the mid tones a little bit and press ok so this selection looks like it'll work so I'm gonna press control command on the Mac click on the blue copy icon to make a selection around it go back into the layers panel on the background layer which is the only layer that we have in this document I'm going to click on the new layer mask icon and notice now that the floor is no longer there now it's not a perfect selection but it's going to work because the color of the floor and the color of the table are very similar colors and I think we're going to be able to get away with it so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply click on the layer select the move tool click and drag the layer over onto the other file by hovering over the tab and then coming down and releasing and there's our file it's a really big layer so we're gonna need to scale it down Control t command t on the back transform we can't see the corner handles so i'm gonna press Control 0 command 0 on the back there's the corner handles and now I'm going to adjust them accordingly. I'm holding shift as I'm clicking on these corner handles to keep the file constrained. The angle is not really matching my scene, so I'm going to right click on it and choose flip horizontal. And from here, I can match the scene a little bit better. And I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right click on it and choose distort just to get a better perspective of the scene that we're working with. Maybe something like this. And press enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm going to press V on the keyboard, right click, fit to screen, then I'm going to press V on the keyboard, get the move tool and maybe I can move it around if I need to, and 
I'm gonna click on the new group icon to create a new group. I'm gonna click and drag this snow layer in there. I'm gonna collapse it, and now it's in that group. Next, I'm gonna hold Alt, Option on the Mac, and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides everything. Then, with the brush tool, I can paint with white on this layer mask to start revealing some of that snow. So I'm gonna use the bracket keys on the keyboard as I work to increase and decrease the size of my brush. So I'm just painting with white, just bringing in some of that snow. And if you make a mistake, you can press X on the keyboard to paint with black and maybe shape snow a little bit better. So maybe something like that. What we're gonna do now is work with different elements. So I'm gonna open up the libraries panel and I'm gonna open up this file here, which is these snow elements that were also downloaded from Adobe Stock. By the way, if you don't have Photoshop CC, you won't have the libraries panel, but you can still download the watermark previews onto your desktop and bring them into Photoshop as you would any other image. So you can still work with the previews. So what I'm going to do now is just select one of these elements and bring it over to the file that I'm working with. So I'm going to click on the lasso tool and I'm going to select this element first. So I'm going to select it, go to edit and copy or you can press Control C. I'm going to deselect that element, Control D, Command D in the Mac. Go back into the file that we're working with and I'm going to paste it here. Control V, Command V on the Mac, and there it is. As you can see, it's a high resolution file, which is good. I'm going to change the blend mode to screen so the black pixels disappear and we only keep the bright pixels, in this case, the snow. Then I'm going to press Control T, Command T to transform. Control Zero, Command Zero for bird's eye view. And I'm going to scale this element down. I'm going to press Control Zero, Command Zero again to zoom back in. And I'm going to just rotate it and make it fit accordingly. Now in this case, I'm going to flip it horizontally. So right click on it, flip horizontally. And keep rotating it. So maybe something... Something like this. And I... I can you know, scale it more if I need to or rotate it more if I need to. So whatever distortions I need to do for it to work. So maybe something like that. So I just press enter to accept that transformation. And I'm gonna use one more element. I'm gonna use this one right down here. Again, control C to copy and paste that in here. Change the blend mode to screen. Control T to transform, that's command T in the Mac. Control zero. Command zero on the Mac and scale this one in as well. And I'm gonna zoom in and rotate this one into position, maybe right about here or so. But I want this one to be in the back. So I'm gonna click and drag this one and place it way back here. And I'm gonna press V to select the move tool and I'm gonna move it around just to fit it into position. So maybe something like this. And actually, I just realized that I made a mistake. Notice how this element gets cut up right in this area? That's because this element needs to be right here. It needs to be in between the layer that's popping out of the subject and the layer that is clipped to the vector. So right in between those two. So now the snow follows through into the frame. Now the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work with the shadows. So first of all, the snow here on the table, it needs a shadow. So I'm gonna open up this group, double click on the snow layer here, and click on drop shadow. Notice a little drop shadow there. You can use the settings that I have here if you like. Notice that I'm not using black, I'm using a dark burgundy color, which is similar to that color you see right there, right under the frame and just brought the intensity down to about 25% using multiply. And notice the light is coming from the right. The light on her face is coming from the right, and so is the light hitting the frame. So you sort of want to match that with the shadows. So the shadows will be on the left side, sort of like here behind the frame. So this is what this is showing. So if I were to bring it up to 100%, this is what that looks like. Obviously that's too much, so leave it at about 25% or so. And what I'm gonna do now is 
right above this snow element here, I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm just gonna paint with this color here under the board. So you can click on the eyedropper tool, select that color, and maybe make it a little bit darker because it's too light. Something like that, and just continue that shadow that's coming off the board. And actually, let me drag this layer up on top of the group and just continue painting that shadow that's coming off the board. So maybe something like this. And then change the blend mode to multiply and bring that shadow way down. So maybe something like that. Now the only difference between the final image that you saw in the beginning and this one is that with the final image I took a little more time working with the mask, a little more time placing the elements and moving things around so they